name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good evening, Pax Christi. Good evening, church. This is one of our uh, special feast days. An essential part of our identity as Catholics, the feast of the body and the blood of Christ. We, are, we come here tonight, uh, again in this special season, um, where we've learned the importance of the gift of Eucharist, uh, where many of you have, have missed it for most of a year, where you're just coming back, you're, you know the blessing of Eucharist, the blessing of being together in worship, you know the blessing of taking everything that is Jesus, all of his divinity, all of his humanity into your hand. Um, and so this tonight is a celebration of praise and a celebration of thanks for our gift of Eucharist. Lord Jesus, you came to feed the hungry. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you gave us your very body and blood as holy food. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us all to share in the eternal heavenly banquet. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. Bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant, we beseech you, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of our redemption. Who lives and reigns with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, we will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and 12 pillars for the 12 tribes of Israel. Then having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocausts and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it aloud to the people who answered, all that the Lord has said, we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people saying, this is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words of his. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. I will take the cup of my salvation and call on the name of the Lord. To you I will offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. A reading from the letter of the Hebrews to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciousness from dead works to, the wor to worship the living God? For this reason, he is mediator of a new covenant, since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant. Those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you, carrying a jar of water. Follow him wherever he enters. Say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples went off entered the city and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, gave it to them, and said, take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup gave thanks, 
and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, of, singing a hymn they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. How much more, one of my favorite phrases in all of Paul's works. And we know that it must have actually been a theme for him. It appears that phrase and that motif that praises the generosity of God's favor appears in, in a number of Paul's letters. And even if you believe that the, the book of Hebrews is, from, is actually written by a follower of Paul rather than Paul himself, which is likely, still, it's Paul's theme. And it just reinforces the idea that it's Paul's theme that his follower or disciple would continue it and copy it. How much more? When we think of the Incarnation, you can't explain God choosing to be born in a particular physical body, logically. You can't explain that scientifically. But what does it tell us? It tells us that our God is a God who rejoices, who loves, wants so much to be a part of what he built and especially wants so much to be a part of the people that he made. That's the only thing that makes any sense about God to me. And you can't explain scientifically how the bread on the altar turns into the body and blood of Jesus. No scientific explanation of it. You can't explain it logically. But the idea that the God person who is also divine would want to stay with us in a physical way, perfect sense to me. Perfect sense. If we look at it that way, it just reinforces how precious and valuable the gift of the Eucharist is. As I said in our opening, how it's, it's, it's a mighty supernatural thing that brings us all together and helps us find our strength in each other, something that we have sorely needed and missed. And you who are, st who are still at home and faithfully joining us, I know how much you hunger for the Eucharist and how much you miss it. You would only be still at home because you're taking uh, your own health and the circumstances in our society very seriously. And you know that I still respect that. And so in a real way, even though you don't get to hold the very body and blood of Jesus in your hand, know that you're with us tonight again. Now, it's all happening at one time here, and so I must take time for some announcements that uh, affect our community. Uh, I love that many of you love to go and visit your loved ones in our Peace Garden who are interred in our columbarium. And you will notice that a number of trees have been taken down. They had become diseased, some were completely dead, and others were dying. And we have a very generous parishioner who offered to cover all the expense of taking all the diseased trees and replacing them with something that will be hearty and healthy. 
The new trees won't be 10-foot trees right, right away, but they will be there soon. It's, it's kind of appropriate in our peace garden. Death came to some trees, new trees will come. Um, another really important announcement. You know that the, the state has signaled that by Friday they will remove all distancing and masking uh, restrictions for groups of a, less than a thousand. And the diocese informed us that that will apply to the diocese's churches as well. But Pax Christi is not going to be ready by next week. And the bishop gives latitude to each parish to address their own circumstances and their own needs. So we're not going to be ready uh, by next weekend to have all of, all of our chairs together and all of our old rows back in place. And our, our pews are still in storage and still will need to be restored from the damage they received before they can be put back in place. We will not have our pews for weeks and weeks. I'm assuming that some will not want to still sit shoulder to shoulder with someone right behind them or right in front of them. So we might have to design sections of church that still preserve some degree of distancing. But many of us are looking forward to, to, to seeing all of us together again. So the staff will be taking time in the next couple weeks to figure out the best way to do it that makes sense in terms of organization and the best way to, to do it in a way that makes sense to keeping everybody feel safe and welcome, but also to see the progress that we're all uh, hoping for. Third announcement, very important. I am uh, 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 happy and proud to finally be able to announce that we have hired a new pastoral associate and that will be Deacon John Brannon. Some, some of you I see by your reaction know that Deacon John has been the diocesan director of youth and young adult ministry for a number of years. I will let him speak for himself in the weeks ahead. We'll just say he was ready for a change. For a new challenge, not a change as if things were bad, but a new challenge. The way a priest says, I loved my years, well, but I'm ready for a new challenge. Don't worry, I'm not leaving anytime soon. All right. He will officially begin July 1st. He will try to spend as much time as he can here uh, during the month of June to learn from Melissa. Um, I, 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 I tell uh, people, everybody else in the diocese is going to hate us because they love Deacon John. And I say, but I don't care. So I can't tell you when he'll be at the altar with us, uh, but we're looking forward to that soon. We still do not have a um, prospect for business manager, property manager. Um, we did the interview process and it just didn't end up with a, with a hire. Now in the meantime, we've received a couple more inquiries and I don't know how they're gonna work out. Um, but we'll probably have a couple more interviews uh, as we um, hope that that 
uh, that process will come to an equally happy uh, conclusion. Keep praying for that. Keep thinking of someone that you know that might be willing to make an offer. We also have a, a special celebration after communion, but I will leave it for then to say more about that. So uh, these are uh, happy times for Pax Christi, but also, you know, the challenges of changing. So um, let's continue to pray for each other and let's continue to just rejoice in, in the, the joy and the strength that our Eucharist and our faith give us. Let's make our profession. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who, with the Father and the Son, is the Lord and glory, and who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so now let us pray that uh, the gift of the Eucharist will make the church a blessing to the whole world. For the church, that the blood of Christ poured out for the world may be the cleansing grace which unites all God's people in his kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that our citizens may be faithful to the Christian values on which it was founded, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our bishops, that they may exercise their ministry with courage and fidelity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those members of our family and friends who have turned away from the practice of their faith, May they come to seek the true God of consolation and joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For our faith community, may they grow in appreciation of and participate, participate in adoration and Eucharistic devotions. We pray to the Lord. Lord For the dying, those who have died, and, uh, and other intentions, the eternal joy of Gregory McNabb, we pray to the Lord. Loving Father, through the gift of the Eucharist, help your church to be the true body of Christ, in word and in deed. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
mystery of this wine and this water. May we come to share in the giving of good works. To humble himself, to share in your renown. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you. May the sacrifice we offer in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord. Wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, sisters, brothers, that my sacrifice and your sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in the mystery, in the offerings that we here present. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. So we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new hymn in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out and without end acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith when we eat this bread. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. And remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As we pray for heavenly food, we offer our lives in service to the kingdom. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. Let's wish each other the blessing of Christ. Lamb of God, Take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For the body of Christ, keep me safe in eternal life.
Please remain seated. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. For the past weeks, uh, one of the things that I keep referring to is that all of our construction is almost uh, complete, and we will soon, with the opening up of restrictions and with the completion of our church hall, we will soon be able to start using it more and more. Today is a day to honor the committee that has been working on that most faithfully for years and years before I ever came here three years ago, there was so much work that had already been done. And in particular, the individual who led and drove that whole process, Bob Rode. We're not done yet, so we're not done yet. Yeah, have a seat. Um, at each of the masses, we're going to ask one of the people that worked with Bob to say a few words. And so tonight, I'm going to ask uh, Mike Bryant, who was on the Advancing the Journey Building Committee, to come up. Good afternoon. My name is Mike Bryant, and I have been on the building committee for the last four years. Uh, Father Pat asked me to say a few words about the leadership of the committee, specifically Bob Road. Bob and I have worked on things together in the men's group, such as the fish fry, uh, the uh, golf tournament, and grocery shopping for uh, the Catholic Action Center. Bob was definitely the right person for this job. He's a quiet man by nature, and I've only got him, seen him get excited about maybe playing golf or his grandson's uh, basketball games. Uh, he kind of reminds me of the kids' cartoon, uh, Bob the Builder. <laughs> you know, the slogan is, can we build it? Yes, we can. Uh, he is thorough and resolute in anything that he commits to doing. Bob thinks he, he chose to take on this challenge, but I'm more convinced that the Holy Spirit chose him. Bob courageously took on the leadership role for the new office building and the downstairs renovation. He had no idea of the twists and turns it would take to make it happen, but he was steadfast in his commitment to see the completion. Having Bob at the helm of this project gave parishioners a lot of confidence that it would get done, it would get done right, and that could be one of the reasons you all gave so generously. The challenge he faced, we all faced, were monumental and unforeseeable. The project started when Father Nick, P Nick Pagano was here, who was also very committed to the project. Bob maintained his commitment as the as pastoral leadership changed to Father Pat. The pandemic struck just as the new building was underway, but that didn't derail him in any way. Bob always maintained a vision of completing the new building and the downstairs within the design parameters and the budget. He demonstrated good stewardship with your generous contributions. I would also like to mention his wife, Angela, Unfortunately, she's not here tonight. Without her support, he would not have been able to dedicate his time and talents to this endeavor. It goes without saying that we owe you and Angela a huge debt of gratitude for your tireless work. The completion of these two projects will have a lasting impact on the ability of Pox Christi to grow and continue to be the vibrant parish that it was meant to be. 
Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. As I said, uh, this process was already well underway uh, uh, before I ever arrived. And I came to appreciate uh, Bob's faithfulness, or his perseverance, and his humility in it all, too. Any, any pastor, any parish would pray to have five or ten Bob Rhodes, but any parish is lucky if they get one Bob Road. And we did. Uh, Bob, would you come up now and say a few words? Take as much time as you want, in fact. Right. <laughs> uh, when Mike first walked up there, I thought I was going to get roasted. So he did a pretty good job. Um, I guess I look at this as a day of celebration, and it's an important event for all of us. Uh, I had a key role, but I needed all of you to support me. So there's a lot of things I could say, but the thing I want to say the most, I just want to thank the people, you and all the other people. On the building committee, I had Father Pat. And let me tell you, it's nice to work for the Almighty. It's willing to listen and then make a decision and decisiveness. And then there's Melissa Hollins, just a tremendous amount of uh, experience she brought to the table during the whole process. I didn't know I was going to get this emotional. But there was other people on that committee. Dennis Tukaroni, Huey Young, Megan Conway, Nancy and Danny Lacey, Rhonda Head, Glenn Woods, and Mike Bryan. All of them brought a lot of uh, pluses to the committee and worked closely with all of us to make the thing happen. There's also one key player that was a parishioner here at Fox. His name is David Carter. And David owned the largest, uh, one of the largest architect firms in Kentucky. And he was on, uh, he was a kind of a, a special person on our committee we could go through and ask for advice. Tremendous uh, support. And also a key part of him was he belonged to the Diocese Building Committee and he helped us get through that process because everything had to be approved at the diocese level. So anytime we decided to build something, they, we had to take it to them and get approval. So he helped us very much so. And then there was the architects, the two architects, Maureen Peters and Jeff Pearson. Maureen in particular, she took the lead on this particular project. She did a great job capturing what we wanted to do, putting it on a paper and letting us build it. And then there's BNR construction contractor we selected through a bid process for this it turned out to be an outstanding firm and you could feel confident that they had built the way you wanted it to be built. So the last people I want to thank is the people out here. You proved to me that the values of the Catholic faith is something that's important to you. And you were willing to put your money on the line for that. <laughs> so we created the, this term and we de developed a plan, which we didn't have in the beginning. We developed a plan called Advancing the Journey. You've helped us to define what that journey is and you've helped us advance it. There's a lot more things that we can do here in Box, I'm sure, and we can use that term. Every time we bring a project up, we want to advance the journey of the Catholic faith. And last thing I'd like to say, God has truly blessed his parish. 
enjoy your tour of downstairs after mass. Thank you. Now you can see. Thank you, Bob. And you only have to do that three more times this week. <laughs> We're not quite at that point yet where we can have a big party. And I'm so disappointed that we can't have a big party. There will be a, a smaller group that, uh, of the building committee and so on that we'll celebrate with him tomorrow. Uh, but I did want every parishioner, because as much as going on I'm sure there are some parishioners who didn't really know who Bob Road was, and you need to know. So um, this is part of our, of our uh, great thanks to you. Now, um, so our plan is to give tours of the newly renovated church basement after Mass tonight. Here's what we're asking. If you'd like to take a tour, when we dismiss, stay in your place. Everybody who's, who needs to or wants to leave can leave church. And when that's all over, then we'll come and organize groups of families or groups of no more than 10. And we'll take every five minutes, we'll take a group down for a 10 or 15 minute tour of all the renovated facilities downstairs. For now the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in 